Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. It's Chuck here, and we have a list of 18 properties. As you're probably aware, if you've been following the show this week, buyer class tomorrow, you still have time to register, but you probably have to do it before about 5 p.m. today in order for us to uh, to get back to you. So it's gonna be a great time. Colin Best is coming. We've got a lot of things going on. So Maple Avenue, number 410 is the first uh, listing for the day. It's a 237.5. It's a one bedroom, it's between seven, 800 square feet. And the fourth floor, there's no pictures on this listing, but the fourth floor has these nice 12 foot ceilings. Wonderful stuff. Maintenance fee is 215. And you pay your heat and hydro on top of that, plus your cable, taxes, and phone. Uh, but beyond there, the water's included, common elements. There's a party room, there's a gym here, so it has a little bit extra stuff. Uh, waters is 369, and you've got a decent sized deck in the back. What you really get with this one here, that chair is on the other side. You get one big open room, plus your um, you get a, uh, a table with a kitchen that overlooks it. That's your kitchen there. And this little bit of extra counter space can go a long way, really. It looks like a small thing, but it can actually have a huge effect on the amount of storage you have. And so there you go, double sinks in the master and uh, December possession on this one. The last two sales of this model have gone right for around the same price, 360 something. I think one was maybe low 370s, but they're right in that zone. Uh, cost again is 408888 and you've got a six-story building behind you so there's a lot of neighbors looking over your backyard and I call that the fishbowl. For me personally I wouldn't go near it. Double door entry is nice and inside there's just a lot of stuff like when you look at this kitchen the first thing you don't probably see is the nice granite countertop stainless steel appliances. You see all the stuff everywhere it's like stuff here and there and it looks like the doll is has been hung like she's a witch or something and uh, you could see the building right there I mean it's just for it's not my cup of tea personally heavy heavy window coverings are not always the best thing when you're selling the house uh, it, it really can kind of close down a room and really sort of make it feel like a box uh, 408 I think is probably not the pri the right price farmstead is 4099 I love the interlock outside I think it looks great there's probably potential there to park two cars if you needed to and so this one here the problem I have with it and some people may love this but I think more buyers today are looking for a more open concept home and so this kitchen is really against this wall and the the family rooms on the other side and so there's really no flow there and you've got a great counter and unmounted sink and all that stuff but there's no flow so you're sitting in the kitchen you have no idea what the kids are doing you can't really talk with your company very much unless they're sitting at the kitchen table and it just makes I don't know for me it wouldn't be the ideal layout excuse me Brandon Terrace is 409 if you look at where Brandon Terrace is it's this loop right here 401 has plans for expansion down the road you are really close to the 401. So it's probably, I, I would say from this home, there's a good chance that you're gonna be able to hear some highway noise. And it's in a great school district, Hadfield. And I'll show you, actually when I'm done this, I'll go back to the map. Inside is just okay to me. I don't find there's anything uh, dramatically awesome about it, pie shape, but it's probably bigger in the front than it is in the back. And I'm not sure how close it would be and so on to that one. But here's what's good about it. You've got all these different retail places here. Premier Fitness, I think, just shut down. But you've got uh, Walker's Fish Market. You can go to the movie theater. You've got Boston Pizza there. You can go to Golf Town and try out some new golf clubs. Home Depot's over here. You've got uh, the Sunset Grill, which is a great breakfast place. Uh, I think Marble Slab Creamery, all kinds of stuff like that. So you're really walking distance to a lot of things but uh, location for me would be a bit of a tough one. Clark Boulevard 409 and you're getting about an 1860 square foot home. You've got tiles on the diagonal and uh, I actually think the price on this one's pretty good. Front living dining room which is what this room is and uh, boy that's an interesting table right there. Uh, this little cutout window would probably make a huge amount of difference in the amount of light passed between the two rooms. So that was an excellent choice there. We've seen it in some of these models 
And uh, there's your kitchen. Replacing that hood fan with a black one would make a big difference. Bit of a different look on the backsplash. And I think overall it comes together pretty well. And uh, glass shower, it's a good price. Clark is a little bit busier, but I'll tell you, I mean, these models have sold 420, 425 easily in the last six months. So this, uh, I think this one represents good value. Scott Boulevard, 419. We don't have a lot of photos to go by. Uh, it better look pretty good for this price, I suppose is all I'm trying to say. 1810 square foot uh, dark hardwood pot lights, if it looks good, but still, they're having a tough time. The townhouse versions are having a tough time over 400. Doug Leash is 424.9. It's been listed previously, and it looks like they might have upgraded the counter on this one here too. A uh, bit of an accent wall pot lights. They've done a nice job in keeping it nice, clean, simple. Uh, do you choose the left door or the right door? And there it is. You know, it's, uh, it's about 1,900 square feet. I mean, if you wanted a similar sized home, you might look at the Clark one and save yourself 15 grand. But here's the thing that's funny is we look at asking prices and they have nothing to do with sale prices because what if these guys would budge, and this is imaginary land, what if these guys would budge 15,000 but Clark is only gonna budge 2,000? Then you're looking at completely different end scenarios and so people get so caught up in asking prices but the big thing to look at is Look for the right home that's somewhat within your budget. Obviously, you're not going to buy a $500,000 home for $400,000. Uh, I mean, the stats in Milton say homes sell for about 98% of asking price. So within a few percentage points, and then do the best you can and then see what happens from there. That's usually the best advice that we give to uh, to people. 604 Laurier is 429. It's a semi-detached with a finished basement. And the question a lot of people have when they read this, seller does, want, does not warrant retrofit status of basement. What that really means is that there's two categories of basement apartments. And I don't really see anything in the basement that says kitchen in the, in the room measurements, but um, a legal basement would, have, uh, would comply with the fire code. It would comply with the building code. The, the, basically, it's, it's sort of been checked over by the town in a few different uh, a few different categories and, and it's been given the green light to have somebody legally live there. And this is just saying legally, somebody is not allowed to live here. Does it happen all the time? And in fact, I bet you probably 80% of basement apartments or higher are actually not legal. You definitely want to check with your insurance about what the risks are and, uh, and just kind of do your own homework about that. I mean, it's beyond the scope of daily homes to talk about it, but if anybody wanted to have an offline conversation, I'd encourage you to give me a call or an email. And uh, we've got some good web links that I'll try and find and post up. Seller's Path is 439.9, and so it's the detached version of the 1810 square foot home that we looked at on Scott with no photos uh, for 419. But this one here, the detached ones are actually a little bit harder to sell because yeah, you're not connected, but I mean, you get to a point at 439 and it's got a double garage, but it doesn't have a yard. They can be tricky because the price range starts getting up. You could actually, I mean, you look at the one on McQuaig for 449. It's not as big as this one, but you still get a yard, double garage, you get a good looking home inside. And so that's the thing. So you've got your deck above the garage. Nice thing about this one is that from your front door, it looks like you've got a little ensuite bathroom. You've got a little in-law suite basically on the main floor, which satisfies a lot of people's requirements is I need a bathroom, a little kitchenette, and I need a bedroom, and I want no stairs. And so for a lot of us with older parents, this can be a very, very good thing. And it's got a pretty nice layout. This model is, uh, it feels pretty big. Um, 439, they're just, they're tricky to sell because it's a very narrow niche for these guys. January 2013 is their, uh, is their possession. So Ferguson is 449.9, Powell model on the corner. So you get a couple extra windows here, uh, crown moldings, uh, hardwood floors. And, you know, overall, I think it looks great. There's another one of the, uh, I think, um, these windows, I think are the ones that are added with the corner lot. And yeah, you know what? You're close to Hawthorne Village Public School. You're close to Craig Kilberger, the new high school. Uh, you could even walk to Guardian Angels. 
really good location to get to a lot of things. There's the uh, the BD Library, which isn't too far from here. Elliott Crescent's in Dorset Park, 50 by 120 foot lot, and sort of a classic bungalow, and it's in good shape. It looks like, at least from the photos, the flooring looks good. Bit of a mismatch on the appliances. The melamine cabinets, which I've seen people do amazing things when they paint these. You have to use a special kind of paint. Um, walk out off one of the bedrooms, sort of classic stuff for the bungalows. And you've got a finished basement here, 449. What more can you say? There's not a whole lot for sale uh, in terms of bungalows in this neighborhood. And I think they've chosen the right price. What you need to watch out for in Dorset Park is the aluminum wiring. Most of the homes were built in the 70s. And so you just want to make sure that you've got an ESA certificate where an electrician has actually checked out your electrical system. And some insurance companies may not insure, but that's but there's a lot that do. The reason why is aluminum is a bit more of a brittle wire. You don't want it attached to copper. You'll get bimetallic corrosion. Um, there's a couple different reasons why aluminum wiring is a little bit different than copper. But again, homes that were built in the 70s, you definitely want to check the panel for that. Simon's Crossing, 459. 1835 square feet come in the front door. You've got a separate little living room here, which could be used as a home office or a den. And that's, I believe, the room right there. And uh, then you got the powder room. It's funny, you can actually see the camera. He's trying to avoid it, but he's sort of peeking over trying to get the camera in there. Uh, then you go through the, the hallway, and you've got a dining room, and then you walk through, and you've got your family room. So it's, a, I think, is great floor plan. You can get a good sense of so dining rooms just to the left. And then your, your kitchen here, awesome stuff. There's a few different ways you can configure that inside space. Three bedrooms means there's uh, laundry upstairs, but it's a great layout. It's one of my favorite layouts that Mattermy's put out. And Giddings Crescent, 479, almost 2,200 square feet for 479, single car garage. And you've got your balcony upstairs. I think that's a great price for that amount of size. And inside... You get the bonus, you get the dark hardwood, you get some California shutters. My prediction, and look, even, I mean, upgraded countertop. Yeah, wow, fantastic stuff. My prediction, this one's gone in a hurry. And Pazbu, which is kind of a weird name. It sounds like a kid's toy to me from uh, from Japan. But you've got uh, 5099 and basically a one room, big open concept kitchen with an eat-in. Uh, I'd be putting appliances in there if I was selling this home and there's no fencing, there's no window coverings, there might, yeah, there's no air conditioning. So right off the bat, you're 10 grand in the hole easy. So just budget that when you're looking at the price of this one. Um, I'd rather look at something that has a little bit more that the owners have just settled in a little bit and it's probably better value. Costigan is 549.8 and a nice warm neutral colors. So you've got a big open entryway. And uh, you've got a finished basement on this one too, with a bathroom. On paper, it looks pretty decent. Looks like you're more than 2,500 square feet. But as we saw in yesterday's episode, some people don't always get that right. Minto Crescent, 579. Uh, it says it's a cottage, so they totally messed that up. 37 by 101, and it doesn't really have much uh, in terms of the size. I'll tell you a mismatch for me, hardwood on the main floor, laminate on top. You've got to be careful how you do that. If it's not done right, it can really mess with the flow in the house. Good news for people with allergies. Probably not a lot of carpet in this home. Granite counter in the kitchen. I guess we'll have to wait for the photos. You can check the link below this video on the Milton Daily Home site. And as soon as the photos are loaded, they're, they're posted actively on that link. So in real time, you'll see when those photos are up. Saveline is 607 and it's a, uh, it's a Glenwood model. It's about 25 and a bit square feet. Although usually the 25 one elevation has, uh, has an open ceiling. So if they add this in here, I think it's 2,700 square feet. And if that's the case, boy, it makes the argument a little bit stronger for this house. Pantry just in the corner. You've got some dark. Uh, it almost looks like a polished wood. It's actually pretty nice. And I, I mention this to clients all the time. If you're getting ready to sell your home, there's the orange glow. It's an orange kind of material. Wipe that all over your cabinets. It'll really bring out the life in them and it'll make the wood look fantastic. So um, five bedrooms upstairs, or sorry, five bedrooms total including it looks like four upstairs which is 
more than usual for this home, and so that room in the front could have its own ensuite. It might be a neat, uh, a neat option for someone with the extra, yeah, plus media loft. That's probably what it is for plus a media loft and a laundry upstairs. There's a lot of space. Call this one about 27. You can look it up if you want, Mad Meat Glenwood, and find the exact measurements. But that's the list for today. And for that size, it's not a bad price. And come to the buyer class if you want. I'll tell you, if you're not coming, you're going to miss out. And if you want to come on a tour, we're doing tours all weekend plus all of next week. So you can just sign up over. Both of those options are just over to that side. And you can even come meet us at Starbucks if you want to just have a chat and maybe just work through a plan of how to get where you want to be. Have a great day and we'll see you probably on Monday. Okay, have a great weekend.